all. Thank you for being here this morning. Let's open up with a word of prayer and see what the Lord has for us. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, to worship, and to praise you. Lord, we ask for your presence to be with our presence this morning. Lord, pray that you would speak to our hearts as only you can. Lord, I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you, that today would be the day of salvation. Lord, again, thank you for all that you do. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning. Go ahead and uh, turn over to 205. Hymn 205. stand and turn over to 199. 199.
in, go ahead and gather around, and shake hands, welcome our visitors. Go ahead and turn over to 201. Oh, come all ye faithful.
Amen. Good singing this morning. Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. Please forgive me for not having a jacket on this morning. I uh, I uh, left it in my my uh, truck, and so I thought I had the right jacket and right suit, pants, and everything. So, uh, but anyways, I didn't have that. So please forgive me for that. I had tried to put another suit jacket on, but uh, it looked pretty ridiculous. So. Uh, but anyways, uh, it didn't look as uh, as good. I'll just tell you this. It didn't look as good as what I wore Friday night. How many saw the picture of me wearing a suit or Saturday? What? Thursday, night. Thursday night. How many saw the suit that I was wearing Thursday night? Some of you saw that. That was pretty nice. If you didn't see that suit, go to my daughter, Elizabeth, and she will show you very happily the suit that I wore at her uh, uh, Christmas play and uh, singing there at the school um, you all remember the suit that I wore for the graduation last year. It was a pineapple suit, and uh, this year I had a Christmas suit on. So you'll just have to go to her and ask her. She'll, she'll be excited to share with you, I'm sure, about that. But uh, I do want to say this also. Um, we're not going to have a second service this afternoon. I was going to have that. And then I know there's a lot of people that have things going on this afternoon, and so we're not going to have a second service this afternoon. We got our Back to Bethlehem tonight, and uh, I know it's going to make a long day for everyone, so we'll just go ahead and, and have this first service and then no afternoon service, all right? I know nobody's too disappointed in that, but, uh, um, it, but if you have not seen our Back to Bethlehem, please come back tonight. And I know that that will be a blessing to you. And uh, I, I appreciate Brother Adam, Miss Evelyn, their vision for this. And then all the folks that are working in the kitchen, uh, those that are, are doing parts. And I, I tell you, it's been so wonderful this year. Uh, we've had over 400 people come through this year. And it's been, I mean, as cold as it is, I'm very pleased with that. And uh, Lord's really blessed it. Uh, we don't know how, how many souls have, uh, have been touched by this. But I can tell you this, they've, the gospel has been uh, planted in their hearts. And so our job is just to get the word of God out, and God will give the increase. Amen. And so we rejoice with that. Again, thank you for being here this morning. This time of the year, I'm often, uh, I can't sit when I, when I preach, so uh, this time of the year, I'm often reminded of the very first Christmas. And uh, I, I uh, just over 2,000 years ago, the... The Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary, and uh, she was with child. And that day that Jesus was born, can I say that love was born? And this, if you didn't remember, last week we talked about uh, proving our love to the Lord. And it seems like every message uh, for the last couple weeks has been about love. And I, I can't help but think, um, you know, love was born on Christmas Day. Before the foundations of the world, God the Father... God the Holy Spirit and God the Son knew uh, that there had to be a plan. There had to be, uh, the Lord had to come to this earth. And Jesus Christ only chose to become man, become sin for us. And uh, he, he knew that he would have to send, God knew that he would have to send his only begotten Son to, to this earth to become a ransom for many. And Jesus Christ became that ultimate sacrifice that day when he went upon the cross. God the Father demonstrated the greatest form of love there in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ demonstrated the greatest love when he, was willing, when he willingly came down, leaving the portals of glory. Yeah. And I, I wonder about this. I, I, even on our Back to Bethlehem, I, I started thinking about this. The passion of Christ, the love of Christ, that he would leave all that to come here. That just demonstrates his love for us. And uh, he lived some 33 and a half uh, sinless years uh, here on this earth. And at the end of his life, the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated the ultimate sacrifice, the greatest form of love known to mankind when he gave his life for us. He paid that ultimate price to prove, that his, prove his love when he died upon a cruel cross in our place. Why did he do that? It said one word is love, his love, his passion. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is love. Knowing who we are, what we would do, what we would say, what we would be, how we would treat him, he still went to the cross because of his love for us. 
Knowing that there were people cursing him and spitting on him, he still chose to die for all. Even, uh, he even said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see, what love that was demonstrated when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, willingly shed his blood on the cruel cross of Calvary that day. I'd like to call your attention to what is known as the love chapter in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. That's where we're going to be this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. For the, uh, I'd just like to go ahead and read the whole chapter and, and uh, we'll get into the message. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Though I speak with the tongues of, of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. That word charity is the same word used for love. And it goes on and says, And though I, give, I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have uh, all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. It goes on, charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thanketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be tongues... They shall cease for our, our uh, Pentecostal brethren out there. This is the verse that we use to, uh, the Bible says there, charity never faileth, but that where, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come. Now what that which is perfect, that's not the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's talking about here is the word of God. And it goes on to say, Then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child, I, I fought as a child. But when I was a man, I put away childless things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even at also as I, I also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity and these three but the greatest of these is charity let's pray our heavenly father once again thank you for your love your mercy and your grace thank you for all that you do for us lord i pray that you'll take this simple lesson this morning help it apply it to our hearts and lives that we may better serve you lord i pray again if there's one here that doesn't know you or speak to hearts i pray that only you do the work that only you can do and lord pray that souls will be saved and lives will be changed and Lord, I pray for that one that may be discouraged or disheartened this time of the year. Lord, I pray that you would put a newfound zeal in their heart. Lord, that they would be excited to serve you once again. Thank you for all that you do. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Here in our, our verse here, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. It's hard for me to imagine something that could be greater or more important than faith. Uh, it is because the Bible says it's grace through faith that we are saved. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It, it is by faith that we are justified. The Bible says, for therefore, uh, being justified by faith. It, it is by faith that we walk with the Lord. We walk, for, we walk by faith. Uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. It's by faith that we overcome the world. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Without faith, we have no means of pleasing God. The Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The fact that Jesus Christ is referred to as the author and the finisher of our faith makes it difficult for me to, to, to fathom what could be more necessary, more important in the Christian life than faith. It is equally hard for me to imagine something that could be greater or more important than hope. 
You see, it is hope that allows us to rest when we are facing times of persecution and distress. The Bible says in Psalm 16, 9, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And that hope, it is hope that gives us reason to rejoice. The Bible says, looking unto the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is with this blessed hope that, that one day the Lord himself shall descend from heaven and with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with him in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. You see, we have comfort because of this hope, this blessed hope. The fact that hope deferreth maketh the heart sick, the Bible says, uh, makes it difficult for me to understand anything more important than faith or than than hope uh, in the Christian life. But the Bible goes on to say here in verse 13 of our text, but charity is something that surpasses all this. Look there again at our verse there, 13. It says, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. We need to have faith. We need to have hope. But God is telling us in his word here, we have to have love. We have to have love one for another. You see, uh, A thorough understanding of this truth will motivate us to be more charitable towards others. I tell you, in a time, is there any better time in this life than right now to be more charitable to people? To be more caring, more loving towards others, more forgiving towards others? People need to see, by our example, why charity is referred to as a more excellent way. I want to preach a message that I entitled, The Greatest Gift is love. The greatest gift is love. The greatest gift that we have outside of salvation is love. But we can't, can I say this? We can't love like we should outside of salvation. If you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot love right. What is love? Love is is willing sacrifice, is the willingly sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of another with no thought of return. Let me say that again. Willing love is willingly sacrificial giving of oneself for the benefit of others with no thought of return. And today we have it all mixed up. It's, uh, yeah, I love you because, uh, you know, I'm going to do this for you, but I want something in return. But love is this, me giving myself to you with no thought of any kind of return at all. That's what love is. I'm going to give to you. I'm not expecting anything back. You know what? That's almost heard unheard of today. Why? Because we don't love like we should. We don't love like we should. Our, our text there, and I want to bring up some things. It says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth it not. Charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. The word that is used in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, for love. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, charity, mean the same exact thing. That agape, that divine love, that that love that only you get from God. It's the deepest form of love known. It is a love from God which is characteristics, its characteristics and depends on, are, are far beyond our natural capability. I cannot love, let me say this, I cannot love you, I cannot love my wife, I can't love anybody else the way that God would have me to love you and my wife and everyone else without the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot do that on my own. Let me say this, when someone does you wrong, are we still supposed to love them? Now, is it possible to do that in your own nature? 
it's not. You think so? How about this? When you go home and you and your wife get in an argument. In yourself, you can't love that person like you should. But because of the love of Christ, you can love them. And they can love you even though you've done them wrong. That's the kind of love I'm talking about this morning. You see, it's impossible for us and of ourselves to love in this manner. We need divine help to love with that agape love, that divine love. The Bible says, Charity beareth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, it endureth all things. We might be able to manage some things in some areas, but it's the part that says all things that gets us. See, it's the all things part that is difficult, and we simply cannot deal with the all things apart from the agape love that God gives to us. The Bible says with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You see, we cannot love like we need to on our own. We need help from the Lord. And I, I, wanna, I want you to notice four actions, because love is an action, four actions of biblical love that are possible, that are possible with God's divine enabling. Number one, love covers all. Love covers covers all. Look there in our verse there in verse 7 it says talking about charity it says charity beareth all things. It beareth all things. The mention of the word bearing. Now what we think about it or immediately our minds think of carrying something to bear the load. The Bible says here and as my father glorified that you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples. To bear could mean to endure or to lift. Galatians 6 2 says, Bear ye one another burdens, to lift, care for, and so shall ye fulfill the law of Christ. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7 here, beareth is a building term that refers to a roof or a covering. Isn't that significant? Isn't that neat to see that? God is telling us here that. That charity covers, it's a roof, it covers all things. It, it covers all things. Biblical love is action. It, it manifests by our attempts to cover the weaknesses of others. This does not mean that we're to condone wrong behavior or remain ob uh, oblivious to others' faults. But bearing all things in our relationships means this, to simply to seek to cover the transgression, failures, or sins of others rather than to advertise them. The Bible says, speaking of this time of the year, we're being Christmas and uh, talking about Joseph in our, in our story here. The Bible says in Matthew 1.19, Joseph, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, not willing to broadcast her sins, not willing to make known to everybody that she's a that she was a harlot, but she wasn't. But he he said that not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily, meaning not to broadcast her sins, not to say, "Hey, can I tell you when uh, in our husband wife relationship?" You know, your wife isn't perfect. Amen. I, I knew Brother Brian would say amen. But can I say this, Miss Sandy? Brother Brian isn't perfect either. Yeah, amen. Can I say, my wife isn't perfect, but neither am I. And my job as a husband isn't to broadcast all her failures, all the things that she does wrong. But she's not to do the same thing to me either. Why? Because love covers those things. Love covers those things. If you love someone, you're not going to go around and advertise all their weaknesses. It's not just in a husband and wife. It's for your children. It's for your friends. If you truly love your friends, are you going to go around and advertise their weaknesses? Now, I know if you know me and Brother Brian very well, we aggravate each other, we tease each other, and I do the same with others in here. But there's no way in this world that you're going to hear me really pointing out all the things that's, that he does in his life. And why? Because I'm his friend and I love him. Love covers a multitude of sins. 
We don't go around and point out all the failures and the mistakes and the sins in people's lives. Now, let me say this. I, if I love him in the way that I should, if I love you the way I should, if I see something that you're doing that is unbiblical, for me to come to you, personally come to you, not talk about you behind someone's back, but for me to come to you and say, hey, listen, the Bible says this. I care about you. I love you. I want you to draw I want to draw you closer to the Lord. I'm telling you this because I love you. Now we can point out failures to them, but we're not to broadcast it to everybody else. There's a difference there. You see Proverbs 10:12 says this, hatred stirred up stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 8, And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And can I tell you, none of us is perfect, and we need love. We need people to love us the way we, that they should, because we need to be covered a multitude of sins in our lives. We, we can look over or cover the sins of our loved ones, but it is... Now, this is where the rubber meets the road, but another story when someone hurts us. We want to find every fault that they have and broadcast it to everyone we know. Is it true? Is that what God tells us to do? See, well, Pastor, you don't understand what they did. Listen, in our own ability, we cannot love someone that has offended us, that has done us wrong on our own. Can I tell you, there's some things that's happened to me, and I can't say that I love people within my own power, but I can say this, because of God's love in my life, I can say that I love people, even though they've done me wrong. I can't say it within my, own, within my own power, within my own abilities. I can't say that. But because of His love, it makes it possible. Do you realize that our relationship with God is made intimate because the blood of Jesus Christ covered all our sins and removed all obstacles that may have come in our way? Can I tell you? It's because of the blood of Christ that covering. Whenever God sees us, He doesn't see our sins. Why? Because it's been covered by the blood. That's why He loves us with that divine love. He loves us that way. No matter what you have said, what you have done, you have been forgiven. Agape love covers a multitude of sins. Perfect love will not focus on the shortcomings of others. If we look long and hard enough, we will realize that there is no one without shortcomings. I don't believe that the Lord is glorified when we go around and seek, to, uh, seek out to uncover the shortcomings of others and belittle others. Jesus said this, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Why? If you have love one for another. In the husband-wife relationship, we're not to go around and point out each other's shortcomings to everyone. In the relationship between believers and other believers, we're not to point out the shortcomings of everyone. Jesus said this, When they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. What's he pointing out here? Oh, what unity we would have what we would enjoy as believers if we practice this type of love, a love that covers, that beareth all things one to another. If I worried about my shortcomings enough, I'd have a full-time job. Not to worry about your shortcomings. Love covers all things. Number two, love is committed in all things. Love is committed in all things. Look there again. It says, beareth all things, believeth all things. We stumble at this statement for fear of being labeled gullible. This is not a call to be naive, but a challenge to trust in God's ability to change any person and any situation at any given time. When we have agape love in our life, we will be committed in all things. Have you ever had the privilege to see a hardened heart transformed? The other day, Brother... Uh, 
Brother Keller was talking to me. He says, he says, is it wrong for me to pray for someone to see someone saved? Not, not to just pray to see people, to hear about people getting saved. He says, but I want to see someone get saved. He said, I just, I want to see someone get, see someone get the same thing that I got. I, I, I just, he was so excited about that. See, when we have agape love in our life, we will be committed in all things. Have you ever witnessed a backsliding Christian restored? And I'm telling you, it just, we, do you believe God can still save the hardened heart? Do you believe God can change the old drunkard? Do you believe the drug, the drug out on the street? Do you believe that God could change them? I believe all things. Uh, no, I'm not gullible, but I believe in the power of Almighty God. I believe in the transforming power of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm committed and trust God enough to believe that the Lord can save the vilest sinner out there. I believe the Lord can take a man that is uh, severely backslidden and cause him to be a very successful Christian. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. We can make a great impact on those who need the Lord by, bringing, by being committed and believe that God can transform man's desperate condition by his wonder-working power. That is done only by the love that believeth all things. Some have loved ones in here that are far away from God. Can I say don't give up? Don't give up. Be committed and believe that God can, can and will do something in their lives. God can work in their lives. Aren't you glad God didn't give up on you? The life of the Apostle Paul is a beautiful illustration of this principle. The church would not receive Paul. Read it. The church would not receive. They didn't want to have anything to do with Paul because Paul was the one that was carrying the marching orders to have Christians saved. But now Paul gets saved. And now he's wanting to get into the church and he's wanting to get involved and do things. But you know what? There was one man that stood up for him, Barnabas. He stood up for him and he brought him to, before the disciples and declared God could do in and through his life many and great things. Can I tell you, God used the Apostle Paul in great and mighty ways. Can I say, there's a lot of Pauls out there today. Maybe they haven't been saved yet. Maybe they're backslidden. But God can do some great things in their life. Do you believe it? Then continue to pray. Believe all things. People that are backslidden need to know that God's people will be there to, hey, I, I call it chicken Christianity. You heard me talk about this before. But when, when, Christians, uh, when Christians have a, 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 maybe an issue in their life, a problem in their life, and then other Christians come by and they start picking at that blemish and they keep picking at it, before you know it, that chicken is out of church. What we need to do, I'm not saying condone the things that they do, but we need to come on along the side of them and raise them up and say, Hey, God loves you. I love you. And I want to see you get right with the Lord. I'm going to encourage you in the Lord. I believe that God can do some great things. This does not have to define your life. See, they are committed and believe that God can do great and mighty things in their lives. Love says, welcome back. We've missed you. Love covers, love's committed, but also love is confident. Notice this in our text, verse 8 there. It says, believeth all things, uh, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. That Greek word hope means to expect or to trust. It's not the, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I, I remember at Christmas time, I wanted a Nintendo. I remember it, so I, uh, this is the wickedest thing I think my parents have ever done to me. But I thought for sure I was getting a Nintendo for Christmas. I hoped with all my heart that I was getting it. I hoped I, with all my heart that I was getting a Nintendo for Christmas. And I picked out this gift that I thought was the perfect shape of a Nintendo box. And I said, I want to open this one, Mom. I want to open this one, Dad. Let me open this gift first. And so what they did is they took that gift. 
And they said, no, you're going to open that one last. So I thought, oh, it's the Nintendo. I was so excited. So the last gift comes, and I open it up, and it was G.I. Joe underwear. I didn't get my Nintendo at that point. I was so disappointed. Later on the, the, the day, my mom and dad, they were, they were teasing with me. They ended up getting me the Nintendo. They had it put back so I wouldn't open it up or something and find out that I got it. But I hope that I had the Nintendo. That's not the hope that we're talking about here. This hope that we're talking about here is an expectation. It's going to happen. It's as if it's already happened. It's that trust. Simply put, love never gives up. We all have been encouraged by the expression, when you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. You ever heard that? When you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. It's very interesting to know that this Hebrew word for hope, you know what it literally means? Cord. Cord. When you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot. The songwriter said this, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Hope is something you hang on to no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the difficulties you may face. I don't care how, about how wicked this world is getting. I have a hope. This hope means to have a complete confidence and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope in his, his provision. The Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That provision of salvation. He has provided salvation for me. I have that hope, that blessed hope. But then I have a hope in his promise. You know, he has promised to protect, provide, to give me power, and a hope of a return. The Bible says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. People who are away from God or who have become bitter need the influence of someone who has this steadfast hope in their life. They are confident in the Lord. You ever met people like that? I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on around them. They still have a smile on their face. Why? Because they have this blessed hope. They have this hope knowing that God is in control of all things. Charity holds on to hope. And charity hopes in all things. Then I want you to tell you the last thing. Love continues. It says, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. That word endure means to continue. To continue. When you read the testimonies of the great saints in the, in the Bible, there are times when they didn't enjoy their lives. There were saints that came into their lives, but they endured. To endure means to hold fast to, or to continue, even during the trials and heartaches and hardships. Paul told Timothy this in 1, 2 Timothy 2, 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. John Hunt was, a, was, was called to the mission field of Fiji where he served with his wife and family in the mid-1800s. After experiencing the death of his sons and great rejection from the native cannibalistic people, Hunt wrote, I am determined to be spent in trying to do these, good, these people good until God shall remove me from them. Soon after... His children died. Soon after that, the chief received Christ as Savior, and a great revival broke through, and hundreds came to Christ. Now think about this. Had John Hunt gave up because of hardship, maybe those people wouldn't have had someone to share the gospel with them. The ultimate goal of true biblical charity is to convince those who are unaware of God's love to embrace it. Paul's heart overflowed with love when he penned the words in his, his jail cell there in 2 Timothy 2.10. He says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation which is Christ Jesus with eternal glory. 
We must be willing to bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things because that's exactly what happened on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should unto henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and arose again. Over 2,000 years ago, true love was born. Because he loved us so much, he came to the earth to make an atonement to cover our sins. Because he loved us so much, he was committed to go all the way to the cross, enduring the shame, enduring the pain. Because of his great love, we have confidence through our salvation. And because of his great love, we will continue forever. We have eternal life. Even when we're unlovable, he still loves us. And he's our example. We're to love others as Christ loved us. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. The greatest gift is love. The greatest of these is love. The Bible says, and now abide faith, hope, and charity. He's not saying faith isn't important. He's not saying that hope isn't important. But he's saying the greatest of these, the greatest of these is charity. Christian, if you don't have love one for another in your heart, you need to come and ask God to give you that love. If you don't have a love for your husband like you should or a wife, the, your wife like you should, you need to come and say, Lord, Give me that love that you had for the church, that you were willing to give yourself for it. Maybe you have a brother or sister in Christ in here today, and you don't have that love, that love for them like you should. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, give me that love. I need a, I need a love like you love me. I need, that, I need help in this area. God, I see in my heart of hearts that, there's, there's th- that I don't love like I should. There's the areas in my life that, that I'm failing. God, help me. However the Lord spoke to you this morning, I I just challenge you to be open and honest with him because he knows your heart anyways. Maybe you need to find a place at the altar. Let me challenge you to come. Maybe here this morning you say, Pastor, I know for sure, no doubt in my mind, I know for sure if I was to die today, no doubt in my mind, I know for sure, 100% sure that I'm going to heaven when I die. That's my testimony. No one else is looking around. Would you raise your hand? Yes, you know for sure, no doubt in your mind, I know for sure I'm going to heaven. Thank you for your honesty. Maybe you say, you say this morning, you say, I don't know for sure. Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand. I just don't have complete confidence. I just don't know for sure if I was to die today, I'd go to heaven. Pastor, would you pray for me? Anyone like that? I'm not going to come get you. I won't embarrass you. But you say, Pastor, pray for me. I just don't know for sure. Anyone, would you raise your hand? Pastor, pray for me. Anyone like that? Right now, raise your hand. All right. Maybe you say, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven, but Pastor, I'm not I don't love like I should. As as I see this, I don't have that divine love for others like I should. Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. Yes. Hands across the room. Yeah. I I have to say this. I'm one of them that has to raise my hand. There's areas in my life that I don't love like I should. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, you know each situation. You know the heart of man. Lord, you know my heart this morning. Lord, there's areas in my life that I don't love like I should. And Lord, I pray that you help me. You help me. You give me that love for mankind like uh, their uh, eternal soul. And, Lord, they need to see the love of Christ in my life. Lord, for others that raise their hands, and, uh, Lord, I pray that you would help them to have that same love, that they would demonstrate that, that they would show that to others, that it would be seen, it would be obvious in their life that they care about others. Lord, for that one that may be nearest hell this morning, Lord, I pray that you would would do a work in their heart, that that they would be saved before it's eternally too late. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. In just a moment, Brother Adam's going to begin playing softly. I know there's not a lot of room up at the altar, but...
If God spoke to your heart, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, God spoke to your heart, I'm just going to ask you to maybe just sit right there at your seat and do business with God. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand. But if God spoke to your heart, you can remain seated and just do business with God as He as He bids you. Just be obedient to the Lord, however He spoke to you. If you need to come to this morning and come to the altar, the altar is always open. Maybe you need to come this morning saying, you just don't know for sure that heaven's your home. I'm going to challenge you. Come forth. We can open up God's word and show you how you can know for sure. Brother Adam's going to play through one more time. You may be seated. I do appreciate you being here this morning. I do want to give you just a couple announcements. I want to remind you of a couple things here. Don't forget tonight is our Back to Bethlehem. We have plenty. I, I tell you, it's been such a blessing. Church, you've come, you've come through uh, in a great way. We've had plenty of food each night. We've had plenty of cookies. We've had, I, I tell you, the Lord's people are good people, aren't they? And the uh, Lord has just, uh, just really blessed and uh, so I appreciate your help in this. I know that a lot of people have been praying. You may not have been able to be here uh, working, but you've been praying because it's been evident. I know Brother Adam, Miss Evelyn would say the same thing. It's been evident that the Lord has been in this ministry this year. And uh, we're just expecting something again tonight, asking the Lord uh, to meet in a great way. If you haven't been through our Back to Bethlehem, come tonight. Uh, between the hours of 6 and 8.30, and we'll run through the program. And uh, there, let me say this, uh, we, we kind of changed it up a little bit this year. Uh, we're not spending a whole lot of time outside, maybe three or four minutes outside. Uh, the devotion is right in here, so people will be sitting here. And I've had a lot of people say uh, really they appreciated that because they didn't have to freeze outside, and uh, they could pay attention and not worry about the, the, the weather. And so you, you come tonight, and I know that you'll get blessed because of the uh, Back to Bethlehem. Uh, I do also want to remind you, next Sunday in our AM service, our first service, uh, the teens are going to they're going to be leading the music. They're going to have a special and uh, doing those things. And the reason uh, for this is we're, going to, we're trying to raise money for the kids to go to uh, Costa Rica again. And so um, all, everything that's not designated to ties or uh, to missions will go into our teen account and help them to, uh, uh, to go on this mission trip once again. They had such a good time, and I think it, it made a difference in their life last year. And so you, uh, if you're prepared uh, to be a help to them, I know they would appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to help them, if you have some odds and ends jobs, I'm not talking about chainsaw or cleaning the, uh, you know, you know the, the snow off the roof or something, if you have a metal roof, I mean, I've, you can take my kid, girls if you want to to do that, but uh, no, it, just those type of things. If you have some small jobs around the house or you need someone to do some errands or something for you, uh, let our teenagers know, and uh, they'll do it for just a love offering, and that will come to uh, the, the church, and that will be to help them and maybe have some spend the money as well on this trip. And then I want to say happy anniversary to Brother Jack and Martha Schaus. Are they here? I don't see him, uh, but anyways, uh, they have an anniversary this week, and so you, uh, uh, if you see them, wish them a happy anniversary. Happy birthday to uh, Miss Donna Wiggs. She has a birthday this week. And then also Miss Sandra Penley. She has a birthday this week, so happy birthday to you. And then our missionary of the week this week, Jonathan and Laura Bryan. Remember them? They're in Zaca, Texas. Uh, Zaca something, Texas. No, Me Mexico. I'm sorry. Uh, Zaca, Texas, Mexico, I think is what it's called. Uh, but that is the uh, drug capital of Mexico. And uh, I tell you, it's, it's a very dangerous area. They need your prayers, so remember them. 
Uh, then our Deacon of the Week, Brother Danny Lovejoy. Our Family of the Week, Brother Jack and Miss Martha Schaus. And then our Trustee of the Week, Brother Phil Bousman. Remember these folks in your prayers if you would. Come on, go ahead and have... I was going to have the men come forward and take up the offering. You want to get the... I think the plates may be in there, Brother Phil. Uh, so the men come forward. We'll take up this morning's tithes and offerings. And appreciate you being here this morning. Brother Peyton, would you please ask a prayer? Pray, Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your word that I can go and worship you and thank you for the time we have to worship you this morning. Uh, you, you are sovereign God, you are great God, and we are here in your presence and we pray, Lord, that you would bless us and give us the spirit of revelation and wisdom and help us to help us to go forward. Thank you for being here this morning. We'll all stand, close in a word of prayer. And uh, don't forget, tonight our Back to Bethlehem. No afternoon services this morning. Uh, next week we'll continue that. So we'll have our morning service, and then we'll have like a five, ten minute break, and then go right into our afternoon service. Let's close in a word of prayer. Brother Tim, sir, would you close us? Brother Tim. Thank you. 